Hey golfers, welcome to part two of different ways to swing a golf club on the functional swing plank. Now we saw before, we can have some arm rotation and a lot just depends on where that face is at impact and then how that influences how the body moves. Now in this one, we wanna say, okay, let's take some of that rotation away. Let's get this club to be a little bit kind of stand, not having the rotation, it's still gonna swing on an incline arc Okay. We're still working it this way, but we're taking away the shaft rotation. We're minimizing shaft rotation. We should never say taking away a completely because it's not. There's going to be, as we come off playing, there's going to be forearm rotation. There's going to be face rotation. We actually need that. So what does this look like? Well, this is, we can do it a couple different ways. We can do it through trail wrist extension. We can just do it through arm motion. You can see the arms don't rotate as I take this club back. So I'm kind of getting more into a golf posture. I can do it this way. Here's a, a one type of takeaway. Here's another type of takeaway. They both keep the club on that functional swing plane going back. Dynamically coming through though, we definitely don't want to be there. We want to have some extension into this wrist because that is club head speed. That's how takes all this energy from us and starts moving it to make this move faster. So now what does it look like through impact? Well, now that club needs to stay on plane. Okay, so I can have it shift forward a little bit. And so remember, that's still a square club face. And that's actually what we're looking for right there. So if the club stays on plane, this would actually be more of the feeling we would have Okay, golfers, now from this perspective, we want that club to stay on that functional swing plane like this. And again, whether you do an early wrist set with a trail wrist extension, or you feel it more into that one piece takeaway with a little bit of wrist extension, but it's more forearm motion, that's gonna to totally move the body differently. And so again, the club stays on that functional swing plane. Let your preferences decide which way you like that better. On the way through though, the same thing happens. We're gonna have need that extension because that helps deliver that speed in the ball, but then through impact, you can see that club face. Okay, it's a totally different position. We don't wanna get into this. So this is just another technique of how to swing a golf club to deliver the speed and that 3D alignment into the ball. So this way we can predict where that ball goes. So feel-wise, totally different motion, doing more of this. Hey golfers, let's go and take a look at it this three-dimensionally. And I want to do from the top-down view. Uh, and this, again, is trying to keep the club face square to the functional swing plane and just show you some of the numbers. So some of the things that I've worked on and changed in my swing, too, is a little bit more of a hip slide in the back swing. And interestingly, as I still take the club back how I normally do with that setting of the trail wrist extension, that little bit of a, you know, sway, and I'll just take it to right about here. See about negative 1.1 just means to the right that a little bit of that bump, I still get a good turn. And if we take a look at the pelvis turn, much less pelvis turn by this type of motion. So the wider this stance compared to that narrow stance of feet together, my pelvis is gonna move differently. And this loads me up differently too. So I like this a lot better. I feel a lot more powerful and I feel a lot more top of, uh, on top of myself, which is just keeping my upper body and my lower body more in line. I have a tendency to get a little bit more, too much secondary tilt, which gets me uh, uh, out of position. And I'll do some more videos on that too. So, But it, I'm really happy with this turn in this position here at the top. Work on some things, but this is pretty good. Um, let's take a look at some X-Factor stuff, which, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of because I believe it happens intuitively and it is more of a response to, for me to take this, my hands in this club and hit the ball. And we can see here that as I'm working now in transition, there's that little slide back to recentering. 
I've actually increased my X factor. So I got that good X factor stretch, if you believe in that. My whole point with showing you this is basically it happens and we don't have to worry about it. I'm not trying to create that. It is just a response to my motion of intentionally hitting, uh, using this club to hit a golf ball and hit a golf ball straight. So some things that I want to point out, um, arm speed, shaft speed. Uh, I know, let's take a look at some of these. So average men driver, uh, this is the driver I'm hitting five iron here is 725, 716 for the women. So we'll have to do some more research on that, see if it's good. Um, there's arm speed there with uh, men's and women's. You can see again, the, the men have much faster upper bodies, faster arm speed, faster chest speed. And what's interesting now we see women with faster hip speed because I believe this is because they were taught to, you know, the belief that the hips were gonna produce the speed. But we can see here that that's not the case. So something just kind of food for thought. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't even have to worry about X factors. So we can just see how as those arms are working down, body's reacting. And now I get myself into a good position. Now, one thing I would like to see myself, and I kind of see here, I, I see too much of that club face right now. I need that face has gotten a touch open. I want to feel a little bit more of that face getting squared up right here. So I'm going to feel a little bit more of that trail wrist and the hand kind of facing down a touch more. Uh, that's something I'm going to work on. But uh, everything else is looking pretty good here numbers wise. And uh, now what I want to point out here is, you know, when we get this shaft parallel to the ground, right around here, it's pretty parallel to my feet. So I know this is gonna be a pretty straight shot, but that face is a little bit open. So I'm expecting this ball to go a little bit to the right. And what I want you to notice right here is there's impact. We have to keep the hands a little bit of that linear motion or down the line motion, keeping that club square on that plane moving horizontally along the plane and not flipping over. So I'm very happy with this particular type of position at impact. Again, X factor, all looks pretty good. And we can see where these numbers are. And so all this stuff that takes, it take, gets taken care of between the, the hips and the lower body. So yes, I'm preaching to the choir. If you're watching this, you're obviously like this methodology and now there's more evidence to prove that this works without thinking about it, hence the external perspective versus the internal. So let's see how it goes through impact. And so now I'm, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. And then this is where I need, I would love to see my body start moving up. So I would love to get rid of this head staying down and being an anchor. I would definitely like to see um, more of me moving. Let's get this, let's get some lines more of me working this way with my upper body and lower body up and through that shot now. So I'd like to see my chest get a little bit faster at this point. Um, let's see if it gives me, it gives me some turn, but doesn't give me the speed. Uh, let's see where my turn is here. So it's in range. I would like to just see it a little bit faster just so I want, I want more club head speed. So, but this is all looking pretty good. So you just, Get rid of these. Let's clear those. Oops, clean up. Okay, still learning this. So this is a pretty good motion. I hit this shot pretty good. So what does this look like in full speed? And just kind of review. Basically, the biggest thing with this, I'm gonna switch views for me. Uh, let's go face on, make this a little bit small. Is, you know, the focus right now is keeping this face square through impact and creating a little bit more of a straight line right here at the bottom with that square face, which is gonna produce a straighter shot. So these are just two different ways for you to start developing a feel of how you're controlling the club. And that's really the ultimate goal. Be able to control this club, that's gonna change how we move, but can we predict where the ball goes? Okay, thanks for watching, we'll continue this journey and research into the best ways to move the golf club to play your best golf. Talk to y'all soon. Later.
Hey golfers, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Let's keep on working. Later.